everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we are going to take a look at all of my starts. As you can see, these are a little crazy. All right guys, so here is the next step for my starts. Now I have so many of them, I can't really fit them on my shelf. So I have them kind of getting used to the sun right here by my Acadia door. And let's bring them up one by one and talk about them. So guys, as you can see, I am in the midst of starting a lot of different things. My goal is to start everything from my own seeds. Now I already uh, am not gonna do one thing and I will tell you guys what that is and that is my black cherry tomato. If you guys remember, I had my black cherry tomato outside and when I went to put in my fourth arch, I accidentally stepped on it. So I wanted one that was already a little bit more mature. So I will be picking up one this week from the AZ Worm Farm because they have them. So that'll be the only thing. The only thing, everything else I am going to try and start by myself. So if you guys aren't subscribed, make sure you guys do subscribe because one, you can follow me along and see uh, how many things I can successfully start from seed and make it into the garden and grow. And then two, we're doing our 10k giveaway, which will be happening as soon as we hit 10,000 subscribers. And all you have to do is subscribe and follow Mighty Crop, who is our sponsor, on Instagram and then just comment and that'll enter you into the giveaway. So let's talk about what I got going on here. So I started some beans indoors. Now I had some amazing bean seasons over the past like couple of years and then last year it just all went terribly wrong. I don't know what happened but my beans were just not happening. But my garden needs the beans and my garden needs that nitrogen in there. So I am going to continue to just call it. I planted it at the wrong time and that's what happened. <laughs> so I started some indoors. I'm gonna be planting beans, just actually putting beans outside too as well. But I wanted to get some started inside and hopefully get them to a good solid fighting weight to where outdoors they would do a lot better. So I've been sticking these by the Acadia door so that hopefully it could get um, a little bit more heat to it and more direct sun to it. And as you can see, they grew tall. These ones are all, like all the way up there. So these ones are my long beans. And currently I have three of them that have decided to start pulling on each other. So I want to go ahead and put those into the ground. Now, you, beans aren't something that you necessarily need to start indoors. Beans grow really, really quickly and typically they grow really well outside. But since I had such a hard time with them, I did want to start them indoors. Now I'm going to put these outside tonight, these three only, like these three that are kind of vining. I'm going to put these outside tonight because we are getting ready to get some rain. I'm actually looking right now and it's starting to sprinkle. So I should probably get those in the ground soon or when it takes a break, then I will throw those in the ground before it gets dark. So those are my Kentucky Wonders. Um, those are pole beans. And then I also, let me grab them, have some bush beans. So these ones are my bush beans. I have some purple ones and some dragon tongues. And then my Kentucky Wonders, or not my Kentucky Wonders, my Blue Lake bush beans, which are typically the easiest ones to grow, actually didn't do that well. I only had one of them sprout, as you can see right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna get these out either tonight or tomorrow, depending on if it's not raining crazy by the time I get done with this video. I will get these out because these ones are looking pretty good and they actually have sprouted pretty well. Now one of the things that I've done is I put them in one of these pots. Beans typically will throw out some really big tap roots and what I wanted to make sure that I did was not disturb those tap roots. These little pots, you can plant the entire pot. Um, what I typically do is take off the bottom of it and then just break it up a little bit so the roots, roots can go out of it and then I plant the entire pot. Now, for what has been going a little bit awry are my brassicas, which we'll talk about this in a second because my brassicas have been giving me some issues with starts. But I have my um, Swiss chard, so that is looking pretty good. It can go out 
probably in the next couple of days um, if the weather cools down a little bit. And then also I have some parsley that is coming up pretty good too as well. And I'm gonna grab the big tray because that's where things are kind of going crazy. I lost all my collards. I only have like one broccoli and something else died too as well, but we'll see what we have. Okay, so I have my tray. All of my beans have been taken out of my tray. And what I have going here is I have some red Brussels sprouts. I have three of those. And then my red celery, I think I'm finally starting to get a little bitty sprout. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this one has not sprouted. So I think I'm going to restart that one again. And then my bok choy is going, so some of them are going fine. Like that one looks fine. Most of them, that's like the only one out of four. Most of them look like this, where I did not water enough. And here's where I think the problem is. I normally plant in these little Jiffy Pea Pots. Well, these little Jiffy Pea Pots got smaller. They used to be around about that. And then the big ones were the big size that I showed you guys with the beans. Well, these ones, when I put added water to them, they were only this size, and they used to be probably around that size. Well, that has made them dry out a lot quicker. So I have been killing a lot of the brassicas because I've not been keeping these little things hydrated. And these little things dry out pretty quickly, which is not what I'm used to. I'm used to them just being fine. Um, the other thing I have in here are my orange hats. These ones are just little mini tomatoes, like they fit in like little bitty pots. So I'm gonna be putting these at the top of each one of my um, stackables, my Dollar Tree stackables. So since the little Jiffy Peed Pots have been failing me, I have been failing my brassicas. So I wanted to think of a different way. And I've seen a lot of people garden and start seed start in these things which are these like little hexagon things. And they're open at the bottom so that then the roots can always have water and always have access to kind of grow out. Cause that's the other thing too, is that I don't know what they, what changed about these because I've been using these for years and I don't know what changed about them, but something changed about them and they're not the same as they used to be. I will tell you that. So with that said i am going to start all of my brassicas again in here so all of my collards all of my greens um my spinach everything my lettuces all is going to get started in here and i'm going to grow it in in this little guy um this holds 72 so that's a lot <laughs> so it's going to be a mixture of greens and then also like the celeries and the herbs too as well and maybe a couple of flowers and then it has just the topping again too, to where it can be like a little um, greenhouse. And then it has the bottom tray to where I can add water to the bottom tray and then be able to water from the bottom. So I'm pretty excited about this. And this guys, this was only like six bucks at Home Depot. So that's pretty cheap to see if it works. Um, the other thing I have going in here is my cilantro, which looks pretty bad. I need to put that out in something. Um, it's too hot to put out cilantro, so I have been using it in a couple of soups, but it dried out a little bit too. I think I'm just going to go ahead and stick it out because the worst that'll happen is it will bolt and then I'll get coriander, which I'm running out of coriander, so it probably wouldn't be a bad idea. And then I have just one little lone broccoli that looks like it's barely barely holding on like it only has two leaves so i think i'm just going to go ahead and restart all of the brassicas um in this seed tray and then we will just go from there so guys if you are a desert gardener right now is the time that you should constantly either be putting seeds out in the ground or starting stuff indoors now it's going to be hard still a little bit because our fall is going to go from extremely hot to like cold or like cold for us, not cold for anybody else, but it's going to be hard to germinate a lot of those plants when it goes from extreme hot to like cold. Like there's really not like a happy medium, at least here in the Arizona desert. So I typically like to start things indoors and just put them outside once they get to a good 
good height and once the weather is appropriate for them. Um, so right now should be a time where you should always be starting something. Even if you already have a lot of like brassicas and stuff like that started, start some more because chances are something's gonna happen to one of them and you don't wanna make sure, well, you wanna make sure that you have your stuff growing and grow in kind of like successions too as well. So I started all of those beans those beans are going to go out and then the next time I'm going to start some more beans and then that way they're going to be giving me beans at a different time than those beans. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about too really quickly is a lot of times people ask me how many plants do you need? Like how many do I need? Or they send me pictures of like an abundance of one thing. And I want to remind you guys that when it comes to growing things, you want to ask yourself the questions. I said questions. One, how much do you actually need in order to not get tired of that vegetable or fruit, um, be able to use it all. Um, I like to have the idea of, I wanna have enough for me, enough for the animals and enough for a friend. And when I say animals, I mean like birds or something that's going to eat part of my harvest. I can eat part of it and it's going to be enough for me to be able to eat and put up a little bit to preserve and then enough to share with somebody else, like one of my neighbors. Um, my Armenian cucumber plant has been putting off a ton of Armenian cucumbers. And so I've been able to eat an Armenian cucumber every single day, <laughs> make a thing of pickles, and my neighbor has been able to eat, our, eat Armenian cucumbers too, just from my two plants. So when I see people plant like a whole row of things, I think to myself, would you be able to eat all of that? And if the answer is no, like meaning that when it comes right off the vine, you either eat it or you're preserving it within like the next couple of days. Like it's not something that's going to go bad. So if the answer for you guys is no and you have things that are going bad, you're planting too much. The other thing you want to consider too is what does your soil need? What can your soil actually provide you? If you're having a lot of issues with having healthy plants, things are dying, things are getting diseased, things are getting infested by different things, you need to start looking at the overall health of your soil and seeing, okay, can your soil support handling or growing huge, huge nitrogen hogs on your veg on your, your beds? So if your plants can't, or if your soil can't do that, don't grow things that are going to require so much nitrogen. Mix some stuff up. That is one of the best reasons for having a small space garden is because you're able to provide yourself with what it is that you need at that time without taking away so much from the soil. Planting beans and planting squash at the same time or right after one another, that provide, it takes something away from your soil and then put something back into your soil. So I'd like for you guys to really start to look at what does your soil need and what would be best for your garden based off of your needs, the needs of your soil, and if you can share with a friend because that's what's important. <laughs> so I hope this video helps um, you guys when it comes to your planning and I hope you guys found what I'm growing a little bit interesting. Try out one of these if you're having issues with the peat pots because yeah, I'm pretty disappointed that those peat pots are not what they used to be. So I'm going to try this out. I'll give you guys an update. And that was just my little video for the day. So until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.